Later I'll continue my tradition of going to the uh, EAA and uh, welcoming people from around the country and around the world to one of the premier attractions that we have each year here in the state of Wisconsin. Certainly though, uh, here this morning, it's great to be able to start out. Earlier this year I asked uh, the lawmakers uh, here in the state legislature to help us protect unborn children, particularly those at five months when we know that, uh, uh, as we heard at the testimony of the Capitol, so many medical experts make the point that an unborn child, a uh, baby at that point, can feel pain. And uh, I think this is one of those where even for those, certainly for me as someone, my family's pro-life, but I think for people, regardless of where they might stand, when an unborn child can feel pain, I think uh, most people feel that's appropriate to be able to protect that child. Uh, there's an emergency ex uh, or exception for a medical emergency, uh, so certainly there are conditions there, but this is fundamentally about protecting unborn children when they can feel pain, something that other states have done, and again, we're one of the leaders on in the country. We also signed uh, legislation that authorizes uh, the, uh, the employee contract for the uh, Wisconsin Troopers Association to make sure that our men and women in uniform who have long gone without a, uh, a contract long before I was governor. We worked hard to try and make sure they can get a contract and we've got a positive one going forward. That will not only compensate the men and women who are the uniform of the Wisconsin State Patrol appropriately, but do so in a way that allows us to, uh, to both attract and retain our talent. Uh, here, one of our big concerns was that if we didn't, weren't able to act on this, uh, we'd be recruiting people and then have them uh, recruited away to other departments and other places around the state and around the country. And the last piece was a relatively technical piece of legislation. Uh, later this morning, I'll be uh, here uh, participating in the uh, board meeting of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation as a visitor. Uh, today, uh, because of the state budget, uh, I am, uh, as I originally proposed, wanted to take all the elected officials off and just have appointees. The legislature wanted to keep in legislative appointments, which is fine. Uh, they may rehash that again in the future, but I thought it was appropriate to put the focus on job creators. And so, uh, I, I, uh, for my proposal, the governor is no longer on, and instead we have private sector uh, people who are actually out creating jobs, who are appointees, and will be the new chair. Uh, they'll be in a um, Dan Aaron's, who's the vice chair, will be taking over uh, temporarily as the vice chair, and then I believe the board of directors will pass a change that allow him to be elected as the ongoing chair of the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. As I promised about a month ago. Uh, when two members asked for specific information uh, about uh, one of the businesses WDC worked with about four years ago. Uh, we are having a full discussion at the board meeting today. The staff has done a complete review on both the uh, financial and legal side. They're going to be reviewing that with all the members of the board today at the WDC board meeting, as well as going through uh, the many, many, many policies that have been changed since then. Uh, that uh, have been put in place to make sure there's greater transparency and accountability uh, for the WDC. Appreciate all the good work the members of the board, including not only private sector members, but public sector members from both parties. Senator Lass has been very involved. Julie Lass, the state senator, Democrat from central Wisconsin, has been very involved in that process for the last couple of years on the policy committee. And so they're going to be reviewing those policies to show how, not just in the specific case uh, that uh, two board members had questions about, but in many others going forward, how the policies have changed and how it's, uh, it's not a permanent thing. They're always looking to make improvements and they'll be discussing that going forward. But uh, as I mentioned along the way, we've been pleased with the work of the frontline staff of the WDC to work with uh, local businesses as well as helping recruit businesses to the state, work with employers that are here, work with municipal, county, and regional economic development efforts, and we're pleased with that going forward. So. It's good to be here this morning to sign these important pieces of legislation of the law, to participate in this, uh, at least as an observer, as we have these discussions this morning with the uh, Economic Development Corporation, and then to spend a little bit of time in our annual tradition of making our way over to the EAA. Governor Walker, yeah. a couple months ago you said that uh, WIDIC had been absolutely been a good suit of taxpayer dollars. Given what you know now, uh, that this, the agency had given half a million dollars to a company that's basically run off with it, that it had not done financial review on 27 awards, totaling $124 million or full proper financial review. Do you still feel that way? Do you still feel it's been a good story? Well, it was my point was, uh, I think over at Aaron Hills, is that they have done reviews. They just didn't do the, uh, the length of the ones they do now. I think the key is, over the last several years, remember this is four years ago, 
at the beginning of this. In many ways, it's much more complicated than some of the work and detailed than some of the work the old Department of Commerce have done, but we're constantly trying to improve it. And that's why, over the last several years, I've been pleased with the policy changes that the board has made, again, including uh, several public and private sector members, Senator Lassa, uh, Tom Silkey, and others, as well as some some uh, quasi-committee uh, members, uh, folks from the world of academia have helped in terms of policy changes. And so, to me, it's one of those where I feel on an ongoing basis they have made substantial changes and improvements to the policies on this board, and will continue to. If we find issues in the past, or a couple years ago, uh, one of the audits, we looked at some questions about uh, whether or not companies could, could receive assistance and be involved in outsourcing as a board. We established a policy. I worked with Representative Barker on that. We will continue to make improvements, and it's one of those where we're going to uh, we're going to certainly learn from some of the changes we've made in the past. But, but the issues we're talking about are four years old, and uh, we've made many, many changes since then. We'll continue to make changes. Just a follow-up: um, the uh, Representative Barker and Senator Lassie have been calling for a federal investigation. Um, do you think that the Attorney General should be looking at opening an investigation into uh, Mr. William Minahan and the fact that he would he hasn't paid his money back? There's been evidence that he was trying to repay a, a car loan. Well, I think the well the the WDC, just like the Department of Commerce did before, is aggressively going after anybody, and not just this individual, but anybody who's not making payments that they made agreements with with the state of Wisconsin. There's a process by which, uh, any time there's a failure to make a payment, the state goes back and goes through initially a process of trying to work with that entity uh, to see if there's a way to. Uh, to renegotiate just like any other financial institution would do. But in the case of where they're failing to meet, even after multiple attempts, they're aggressively going into court to take legal action to make sure that they get as many of those assets back. They the received a civil judgment already. He hasn't paid it back, so should there be a criminal investigation? Again, those are all part of the process. I mean, for us, I think WDC going forward is going to try and use uh, every, uh, every effort they can to make sure that in these cases, just like the Department of Commerce did in the past uh, with situations where they were failing to get uh, payments back to the state. Governor Welk, you mentioned outsourcing. Last time we talked at our meeting, meeting, you said that you were still talking with uh, officials about clawing back some of the money mm -hmm. from the corporation. Kind of thing. <coughs> uh, what have they apprised you the status of that right now? Well, they're going to talk. They're going to give some of the updates later at the board meeting. They do that on a constant basis to make sure that the money that's uh, being involved, whether it's in a loan, a grant, uh, other things of that nature, that we make sure that it's being spent on the areas they made. If they make a capital investment for any company, not just specific to this one, but uh, if an uh, investment is made, an agreement is made, it's really key. three key things are part of the process now that weren't before WDC was started, and that is uh, support's going to be given for capital investments, support's going to be given for job retention and support's going to be made for job creation. If they don't meet the criteria's made, uh, uh, promises made in those three uh, categories, um, ultimately the state's uh, going forward not going to make, uh, they're not going to be, make, be making payments going forward. Have they yep. given you an exact, um, I guess, update or any kind of status? Again, they're going, to, they're going to talk about that, the updates and some of the questions people had just a little bit here at the board meeting. Governor, in cases where we've had, we had a couple of companies that appear to have misrepresented their own situation to the taxpayers when they asked for help, should, if we find that out after the fact, should our state continue to work with those people if there's a chance that they've been bad actors? Well, again, that's part of the, the process and the policies we're putting in place to make sure it's not just a, a determination made case by case, but that there's an overall set of policies. It's part of the changes that have been made the last couple of years, particularly since 2013, and it's part of the process where it's uh, it's not a one one and done thing. That from a policy chance point, every time we learn about something, this board going forward, I would anticipate uh, even without me being the, uh, on the board, but our expectation of the board, the appointees we make, is they're going to look at situations that come up along the way and make sure that we've got effective policies. Now, Governor, the abortion bill likely to face a court challenge against what's been put into this uh, bill that you think you can survive something like that? Well, as I mentioned, there's a provision for a medical emergency. I think that helps meet the test of the court challenge. Uh, but going forward, again, it's one of those where I think it's pretty clear uh, this is at five months. It's a reasonable standard. Uh, an unborn child can feel pain. Many medical experts have testified to that. Um, and five months in, again, I think people, not just those of us who are pro-life, I think most people in the state understand that when an unborn child can feel pain, uh, that more than ever is an appropriate time to protect that unborn child. What do you make of Donald Trump's remarks about John McCain? 
Well, as I've said repeatedly uh, over the last few weeks, I'm not going to comment about policy uh, that other candidates have because um, to me they can speak for themselves. I'm going to talk about what I'm for, not who I'm against. Uh, where I've drew a line though is uh, this weekend uh, when Donald Trump went after John McCain because of his status as a prisoner of war. That's personal to me uh, and I just feel passionately that anyone who goes after a veteran but particularly a prisoner of war, uh, that's crossing the line. John McCain, no matter what you think about his politics on any given issue, John McCain is an American hero and I will defend him and any other prisoner of war, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what others say, um, that, that crosses the line and I just won't allow it. Should, should, uh, should John Chisholm remove his name as Milwaukee County uh, District Attorney? I, I think most people in this state are, 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 are ready to move on. They're tired of all the time and effort, distractions, the money that was spent there and otherwise. Most people in the state are just ready to move forward. And I think the decision last week by the state Supreme Court allows us in the state to go forward. Should there be an investigation to Kevin Kennedy and the Governor Accountability Board? Well, I, I think there not only needs to be an investigation to the Governor Accountability Board, I think there needs to be a change. I think we need to replace it with something completely new uh, that is truly accountable to the people of the state of Wisconsin. And I'm willing to work with the members of the legislature and both political parties to make sure that we have an affair an accountable entity that uh, manages elections and ethics in the state of Wisconsin. Can I, can I, be just, can I just be clear? Are, are you specifically asking that there be an investigation, a criminal investigation of JAB? Well, I think there needs to be an overall review. I certainly would, as the speaker and others have called for, an investigation into the actions of the Government Accountability Board I think is appropriate. Uh, when you look at their, uh, their actions on any number of issues, not just those that have come up the last week, I think it raises some very serious questions in this state. Uh, and I think going forward, more than just the review or investigation, I think, uh, and I'm, I've said this in the past, I say it even more now, I'm willing to work with the members of the State Assembly and State Senate, Republican and Democrat alike, to find a better replacement uh, for an entity that can help uh, oversee elections and ethics in the state in a, way that it, in a way that is fair and transparent and accountable to the people of the state of Wisconsin. Should there be partisan officials on that? Board, whatever it would be. Again, those are things we're willing to work with lawmakers of both parties on. You want something that can stand the test of time, so it's got to be fair, it's got to be accountable, it's got to be transparent to me how that's done. Uh, certainly we're willing to work with people on that, uh, but I think it is appropriate to have one that uh, that uh, makes sure that it's accountable to the people of the state of Wisconsin. Time for about two more questions. Concerned about Weedick's issues being scrutinized in the campaign trail. Am I what? Concerned about the... No. No, I mean, all, all 50 states have uh, entities similar to this. Uh, what we're doing is very similar here in Wisconsin to what states do all across America, Democrat, gov or Democrat Republican governors alike. Uh, we're proud of the work that our frontline staff has done with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. You know, with a new entity over the last four years, have there been hiccups along the way? Sure. Um, but if you look at the work, if you talk to people here in the Fox Valley or elsewhere around the state about the work the frontline staff has done, with uh, municipal, county, and regional economic development entities as well as job creators. But they'll tell you they, lo they love the work. They love the work. We hear that time and time again, and so we're proud of what the frontline staff's doing to help retain and recruit more jobs here in the state, um, and uh, we're constantly improving. You're saying there should be criminal investigations into both the Government Accountability Board and into this Mr. William Minahan guy. Both of should both be investigated in similar ways. Well, to me, I, I think we should, in terms of the, any case that involves WDC where someone um, has misrepresented themselves in addition to going after, uh, going after them uh, in the civil court process to try and collect, if they're not able to fully collect uh, on behalf of the taxpayers, we should use uh, any legal means necessary to do that. In terms of the Government Accountability Board, again, I've said I've had problems with it just on its policies and its interpretation of law for some time. I think it's appropriate more so than an investigation. I think it's appropriate to just get rid of it and replace it with something that is ultimately accountable, transparent, uh, and fair for the people of the state of Wisconsin. All right, that's all I've had time Thanks, for. Thanks, guys. Thank you.